Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out Proxmox. Let's get started with the installation. So in this video, I'm going to be diving into the world of high availability and clustering within Proxmox. This is completely all new to me. I've never used Proxmox before, so I'm excited to see how it works. And I'm excited to try to cluster Proxmox. I'm going to be using two to three VM hosts and it just looks like the server that you see right here. I'm going to be installing version 8.1. This is one of three hosts I'm going to be installing this on. I need to wipe the other ones and move the VMs off of them, but um, I can just move those on my production stack. Okay, so since I've got the first host fully set up on Proxmox, it's running it. I'm going to go and install Proxmox to the second node I will be running. I think for the purpose of this video, I'm going to have a third node be virtualized because I think I can do nested virtualization in KVM, but um, I just don't have three hosts, three bare metal hosts at the moment to run this on. So um, this is the first host, like I said, the two power connections. We have a 10 gigabit connection here, and this goes down through my 10 gigabit switch all the way to the uh, MDF server room that has a bunch of 10 gigabit connections uh, that goes out to the rest of the building and the rest of all of the other servers that are in the production environment. All of the things in my testing environment right now are on one gig connections, but for testing, obviously, it's most likely fine. All right, so this is going to be our second VM host. I've got a one terabyte SSD, uh, just because that's all I have at the moment. Uh, I'm going to have to get a tray for that, but this server is identical to all the other ones. It's got uh, another 10 gig network card, two power supplies, uh, actually, the processor is the same, but the RAM is not. This one has less RAM. I think it's only got 8 gigs. Uh, I'm going to upgrade it eventually, but um, I just need to figure out how to put the drive in. Actually, I have the caddies right here, so I just got to find the screws and I'll get this SSD put in. Okay, so we're going to just put this in there. It'll be good enough for now. And I'm going to grab a DAT cable. And I'm literally just going to route that right into the spare port right there on the Microtech switch. And I'm going to fire the server up, install Proxmox, we'll be off to the races. Okay, so at this point we have PX1, which is the uh, server in my office, PX2, which is this server. We have both of them in their own separate Proxmox worlds. Now we're going to combine them into one Proxmox cluster. And to do that, we're going to go into cluster here. We're going to click Join Information, Copy Information, and go into here, Cluster. We're not saving that. We're going to Join Cluster, and we're going to paste it in there. And is we're also going to type in our root password. I don't think I typed that right. Here we go. We're going to Join. Okay, so we're going to close out of this, and as you can see, we already have a PX2 showing up here, so that is fantastic. Okay, so as you can see here, this is PX1. We have 12 CPU cores, 32 gigs of RAM. Over here, we have only 8 CPU cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So actually, this does have less CPUs, which is interesting. Did not know that. But it looks like it is faster, which is cool. Okay, so now I'm going to do basically the same setup process. I have a virtual machine right here, as you can see. I'm setting this up completely digitally right now, which is really cool. So I am virtualizing Proxmox, which is going to virtualize more VMs. Makes sense. So we're going to just set this up the same way I set up all of the other ones. As you can see, it's already pulled an IP, um, but I'm going to overwrite this just because I can. And I need to make sure I can get the DNS records created. So it's going to be .204. Uh, as you can see, that was literally the same as the bare metal installation. This is just virtualized, so um, it should be no different whatsoever. I'm going to wait for this to install. I'm going to add it to the data center, just like we just did with the other host. We're going to get this all set up. I'm going to install Ceph. We're going to continue on with the installation. Okay, so I have the third instance, the third host added to the cluster. I have 30 gigabytes of RAM on it, 8 CPU cores, um, it's 3.5 gigahertz, not too bad. Uh, let's go to the summary here. So it looks like all of our nodes are online. Ceph is having a warning for some reason, which I will explain here in a second. We have about 2 terabytes of storage. Um, so the reason Ceph is complaining is because we don't have any extra disks to assign to it. Uh, this is an issue because Ceph only runs specifically on hard disks or SSDs. 
uh, does not run on hardware RAID controllers, it does not run on partition drives from what I know. So in my current setup, I am not able to use Ceph, which is kind of annoying. I should have done more research, but that is my bad. If we go to storage here, we're gonna go add GlusterFS. I think I might be able to get Gluster working because theoretically that should work. Okay, so now it's quite a little bit later. Uh, I have successfully cre created a Gluster cluster. I've done this before, so I don't want to go over it in this video, but um, basically what you need to do is you need to install Gluster through apt. Uh, this is pretty standard. You're going to install it there. Next, you're going to create a volume uh, with a couple of peers. Then you're going to add your third peer. Uh, and if I do Gluster volume status GFS volume proxmox, as you can see, it looks like we are good. We have all of our bricks. If I do volume info, this should show us the volume as well as all of the bricks. So the bricks are, I guess, different hard drives. You could think of it as different servers. Um, so we got all three of those there. And it's replicating the data between all of them, which means at any one, that any one server could become the primary source of replication, which is really cool. So. All right, so now let's go back to Proxmox. We're gonna go to storage. We're gonna go add, and we're gonna add a Gluster FS. Okay, so we're given it. We've given it an ID of Gluster one. We're going to add our two peers. Nodes is all. We're going to enable it. We're going to click add, and theoretically that is all we need. So if you go here, storage on the other one, we should be able to go to disks. All right, so it looks like we are we are off and we are good with this Gluster cluster. Okay, so I've just created a HA group. I've called it test. I have assigned it the different nodes and I've given them priorities based on what I think should be their priorities. Now, these numbers don't really matter. It's just greatest, I would think, is the highest priority. Lowest is the lowest priority. So the VM that is running Proxmox is the lowest priority. Then we have the other bare metal server that has less CPU cores. I gave that a lower priority. Then I have the fastest server with the most highest priority. So. I also went into HA, this is under data center by the way, and I added the resource. I went and clicked on the VM, added it to the group, and allowed it to relocate five times. Um, I'm not sure why you need to set limits, to be honest, because I would think that if you have correct priorities set, you shouldn't need, it shouldn't migrate back and forth, but we will see how that goes after I finish the installation of Ubuntu. Okay, so I have the VM booting now after it has installed Ubuntu. Um, it is obviously almost done and that means that we should be able to start seeing it migrate between hosts. We're going to click migrate. We're going to do target is PX2 and we're going to migrate and it says task OK. So we're going to go to PX2 and just see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it migrated itself back and I can see that on the network bandwidth too. But it was able to live migrate to the other to the other host, and actually I did see one ping drop in that process. So that's interesting how reliable it is. I would say that's pretty good considering I haven't fine tuned any settings. There was basically no settings to fine tune. I go to groups and I edit this. Let's migrate this to PX3. Okay, so I'm migrating this to PX3, which is the VM, and. <laughs> looks like it's already fired up again, which is absolutely incredible. And I'm also able to see on my ping that I'm seeing a little over a millisecond of latency, which is right on point because that server is pretty far away in the network. So that is pretty fantastic. Um, and from a network standpoint, we peaked at 4.8 gigabits per second during the migration, at the peak of the migration, um, which is not bad at all. So this is really cool that it is able to literally live migrate between servers and hosts. Um, I do not think this is going to work, um, but this is something I want to try anyway. I'm migrating this back to PX1, and I'm very curious to see what happens if I unplug the network on it. Okay, so I'm gonna log into PX2, and you'll see why here in just a second. As you can see, we have our whole data center summary. What I'm going to do, we're gonna switch to the real life camera. I'm going to go and I'm going to unplug this server from the network, which actually I can't do because that SFP is messed up. So we're going to go in the back here. We're going to unplug it from the network. This is on this side. Okay. Okay. So it is off the network. If we go back to our pings here, as you can see, the pings have dropped 
very curious to see if these pings start again. Okay, so on another note, I just stopped recording this video uh, and because I concluded that it did not automatically fail over. But as you can see right here, this VM actually automatically moved to PX2, which is absolutely incredible. If we go down here, as you can see, I'm pinging it and it kind of just started pinging again, which is amazing. So what's really cool, look at this. You can see here that it tried to fence node PX1 and it failed, okay? But here, it actually succeeded, and it successfully sent it to me. Um, very cool, nonetheless, that it actually automatically migrated over. So by the looks of things, now that this node has been up for a while, it has chosen to migrate it back, which is really cool. So it is actually automatically migrated back over to that other host. Absolutely fantastic. This is really cool stuff. Thank you for watching.